This is La Catedral, or Hotel Escobar, if you may, the self-designed luxurious prison of the notorious Pablo Escobar. Not many criminals can say they designed their own prison, one more luxurious than most mansions. So why was it so expensive? Let's see why, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on more interesting videos. Let's get started. It was Escobar's design and build. The first reason why Pablo Escobar's prison was so expensive? Well, it was Pablo Escobar. He was by far the wealthiest and most notorious criminal in his time. In fact, he even made it to the Forbes list of richest people in the 1980s. The subject of multiple movies, TV shows, and pop culture references, he's the most infamous drug lord of all time. A murderous drug lord, keen football player, and on the list of Forbes' richest people in the world. What hell of a resume, actually. Just to give you an idea of how rich he was, he once set $2 million worth of bills on fire because his daughter was cold. Now, oh, and he spent about $2,500 on rubber bands per month to hold all of the banknotes for the money that he was earning. In the mid-1980s, it was estimated he was earning $420 million per week. Mm, that was a mind-blowing $22 billion per year. So it's safe to say that if he was going to spend time locked up, he wasn't going to skimp on anything. But how did he get so rich in the first place? Well, to understand this, you need to look back at the rise and fall of Escobar's drug empire. Escobar had pretty humble beginnings in the city of Medellin in Colombia, where he grew up. He was born to a family of seven children. He did, however, start his criminal career pretty early, committing petty thefts like stealing and reselling gravestones, stealing cars, and even lottery tickets. He continued smuggling contraband with the help of local gangs, even resorting to kidnapping and ransom. In 1975, he moved into smuggling coke to the U.S. Initially, this substance was not a popular narcotic in the U.S. It was mainly used by those in the poor working class as a way of dealing with stress from heavy workloads. It wasn't until the 1960s and 70s that it gained cultural significance among the wealthier folks, such as those on Wall Street. And just like that, Escobar saw an opportunity. He stepped up his smuggling operations around this time. He even got caught once in 1976 by Colombian authorities. The case quickly fell apart when he ordered a hit on the arresting officers. In the 1980s, thanks to Escobar, the U.S. saw a boom in the usage of this substance. By this time, Escobar was a billionaire with many powerful friends and enemies in Colombian politics. In fact, he was behind the assassination of a Colombian presidential candidate that wanted to sign an extradition treaty with the U.S. so that Pablo would be prosecuted in the U.S. This was when the Colombian state realized that he had too much power and negotiated with Escobar to be jailed. But Escobar only agreed under one condition, that he designed and built the prison himself. Well, now, why would the wealthiest drug lord give himself up voluntarily without some conditions? Well, of course, Escobar had something to benefit from it. By this time, he had made far too many enemies and he needed a secure place to hide. So what better place to hide than a prison that you designed by yourself? Inaccessible location. The second reason why Escobar's self-designed prison was so expensive was its bizarre location. Escobar wanted the prison built on a mountaintop with an excellent view of the city of Medellin below. This was a brilliant location for a man with so many enemies. It was almost impossible to reach, and the high vantage point lets him spot any approaching intruders. The mornings were also filled with thick fog, making it impossible for airstrikes from above. But of course, building a luxurious prison palace on such an inaccessible mountainous location wasn't going to be cheap. The security. The third reason why Escobar's prison was so expensive was because of the sheer amount of security needed. Being the world's most wanted criminal doesn't come cheap either. As a part of his deal with the Colombian authorities, Escobar was allowed to choose his security arrangements. Now, his prison palace was heavily guarded with dozens of guards that were loyal to him. His prison palace, nicknamed La Catedral, ironically had a separate room filled with tons of military-grade weapons in case of an impending attack. The prison palace was also surrounded by huge towering walls with barbed wire, making the building impossible to break into. In fact, even the Colombian National Police were not permitted within a 12-mile radius of the palace as part of Escobar's list of demands. Suffice to say that teams of burly security guards that are fully loyal to you, military-grade weapons, and a rock-solid fortress also don't come cheap. The Amenities the fourth reason why Escobar's prison was so expensive was because of all the impressive amenities. 
It was such a cushy and luxurious place that you would mistake it for a posh country club or resort in the middle of a forest before you ever thought it was a prison. The prison palace boasted of a library, a cafeteria, guest houses, and even a place of worship. Yeah, it's said that the most dangerous drug lord in recent history, one who sent people to the pearly gates in his own house, slept with a statue of the Virgin Mary carrying baby Jesus by his bedside. Like many Colombians, he was a huge fan of football too. So naturally, he also included a football pitch built on the prison grounds. Because what better way to wind down a hectic schedule of drug smuggling and plotting assassinations than a good game of football? The palace also boasted a state-of-the-art kitchen, super comfy beds, water beds, and even jacuzzis. Being this bad kingpin didn't stop him from being a doting father either. He built a separate dollhouse for his little daughter where she could stay when she came to visit. The prison palace also had a separate disco where he would party away with his friends and influential people. He also had game rooms equipped with the latest televisions too. The prison bedrooms were a far cry from the stone cold walls, metal basins, and sleeping on the floor witnessed in regular prisons. They were some of the finest bedrooms, exquisitely refurbished, and wouldn't look out of place in a five-star hotel. The prison was even named Hotel Escobar at one point. Lavish parties. The fifth reason why Escobar's prison was so expensive was because it had to be fit for all the lavish parties and get-togethers of the wealthiest drug lord in the world. You can't be the most notorious criminal in the world and not party like one. Escobar's parties were great, but his birthday parties were epic. On his 43rd birthday, Escobar invited the Colombian national football team to his prison palace for a friendly game on his own football pitch. And of course, when an influential drug kingpin like Escobar invites you to his birthday, you don't really turn that down. So all 22 members of the Colombian football team attended. There, they had a lavish lunch along with a friendly game of football with Escobar. He spared no expense, obviously. He brought in some of the most talented chefs in Medellin City to cook the food. The menu included exquisite dishes like smoked salmon, turkey, smoked trout, and caviar. And he even made his personal prison guards serve the drinks at the party. He also brought in groups of models for his guest list to the party. In fact, some of the Colombian women were even writing letters to Escobar begging him to choose their daughters. Click on the playlist to the left to binge watch reasons why more presidential stuff such as The Beast, Air Force One, The White House, and The Oval Office are so expensive. We'll see you there.